Hello and welcome to the second round NPO League card coverage of the 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge presented by Innova Discs. We've got big Julie commentary here, Jeremy Colling and Paul Uliberry. Yeah, we're back, man. Super excited. Lead card, second round. Paul McBeth leading the way off with 11 down first round. Three, actually four other players with nine down rounds. Hot starts in this difficult Iron Hill disc golf course in Newark, Delaware. Hole one is a par four, 605 foot Anheuser or a sidearm tee shot that you'd like to get about 380 to 400 feet off the tee, which would set up a pretty straight approach through a tight gap that gets down here past this short pin, downhill pretty much all the way on the second shot. Um, it's a fun starting hole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really tight rough left, really tight rough right. Um, middle is the key, and if not, you're going to be scrambling. And that's the name of this uh, you know, game on this course is scramble, scramble, From scramble. Huntington Beach, California, Paul McBeth. Surprised he's still claiming Huntington Beach, California. I mean, he's got a house and a wife in Virginia. I don't know what's going on with that. That doesn't matter, though. You know, what matters is this tee shot right now. <laughs> I'm sure he's sitting there concerned a little bit about why he said Huntington and off, Beach. And off the tee, this, there in person, this looked perfect. But even this kind of came out and got into the world. Paul Ulibarri. In previous years, we've seen you throw a sidearm here off the tape. It looks like you're going with that F5 again. Perhaps to get a little bit more distance with that Anheuser turn. Yeah, no, I'm definitely trying to get around the corner to have an easier approach shot. Um, one of my main goals on this shot is to make sure to throw it as far in the woods as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that shot was looking pretty good, but once again, it did not turn over all the way, and his eyes are back into the woods. I'm right by McBeth. It's a perfect spot. <laughs> and Seppo Payo, a player who has been playing incredibly well lately, second place of the European Championships, sixth place of the World Championships, really showing the world what he's got. He's been playing on the top level for a long time, but it's good to see him over here in the States this year playing some really great disc golf. Yeah, absolutely. His skill set is all around the board from sidearm back and tutter putch. He's... Mm -hmm. Tutter putch. Tutter putch. You said tutter putch. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. His touch with the putter is phenomenal. His putting stroke, you know, he's one of those people who can bring all kinds of different putting strokes mm -hmm. to the to the tournament, and he's just a phenomenal player. Matt Bell, in my opinion, is has one of the highest ceilings for a lower rated player. I think he's mm. about 10 10 rated or something around mm -hmm. there. He hovers around that rating for uh, for the last couple of years, but. He can throw some shots. Yeah. Look and at this shot. If this doesn't fade back into the wow. woods, it does just a little bit, but that's, that's a good. beautiful shot. Matt, yeah, former world champion. And putter. putter. Yeah. Putting world champion. That says a lot, though. Absolutely, it does. To claim a title like that is mm -hmm. not easy. Look at this shot, though. Yeah. Wow, Flex Seppo out. having to go with a patent pending shot. Oh, my goodness, he's outdriven the approach here. That is phenomenal from that stance. Yeah, that gives him just inside or outside the circle look. And this is my just patent play for this yeah. hole. You know, just <laughs> throw it far in the woods. I mean, just chip up a flick roller and you're outside 42 feet, so another layup coming up for par. <laughs> Absolutely. My favorite comment in the com comments for the for the YouTube channel was, Paul Uliberry is pretty good inside the circle, but outside the circle, he's a bushwhacker. <laughs> And Macbeth having to go with a forehand roller as well. Matt Bell, who made it substantially further up the fairway, is having to go with a flex sidearm shot. Doesn't quite catch edge. He's going to have a long putt for birdie. But uh, putting world champion. Yeah, you'll expect him to just run all kinds of putts. Mm -hmm. he, he is fearless. Yeah, very aggressive on the putting green. Along and, with that guy. Mm -hmm. But that was well out of position, so just a layup there for Paul and... Here's me just bushwhacking it. <laughs> God. Yeah, there's a... He ain't lying, though. No. You know? I really like I've that seen guy. him make putts outside the circle. Give yourself some credit. All right. I'll try oh, to top time. right. Catching nice putt there from Matt. On cue. That wobble gobble ching. Get that high leg up. That Dirk Nowinski high leg. Oh, yeah. 
Turn around, Fuda. And Sepp. Oh, look at this birdie. Wow. You rarely see a, a tee shot come up short on the corner. Produce a birdie on hole one. That's impressive. Patting those inside the circle stats there. And have two birdies and two pars on hole one. Hole two is a very technical par three, 380 feet through the tight woods. And as you can see, there's a lot of trees right here in the middle. Players are gonna have to decide if they wanna go the inside flip up or the outside flip up. Either way, it's gotta be something that has a little bit of glide at the end of the flight, I believe. Um, very rarely you'll see a player throw a turnover sidearm to try to get that glide all the way there, but it's so long to hold that turn the whole way. You're gonna see all these players throw the hyzer flip backhand most likely and just try to avoid all these trees here and skip up somewhere near the green. Yes, sir. So from the tee with this camera angle, it looks like that inside gap is actually the bigger one, you see? But we're trying to go around that gap. That gap really isn't even accessible right there. Yeah, see it's the inside? so tight. Yeah, he, oh. if he gets around that tree yep. and then inside the other one. That's, that's the gap. Yeah, we're not aiming for this other one. And this is the inside gap but catches that inside middle tree mm -hmm. it is such a finite line you have you've got to keep it so skinny to hit this gap perfect beth has made a career out of hitting skinny gaps perfectly and that is really early that's that, going to be a difficult part that's save. why that inside gap is so tough it's mm -hmm. actually probably three to three foot gap mm -hmm. to hit and I was trying to get a little too cute. Oh, there. wow. Yeah. Showing the, the, the difficulty of this hole here. I'm so far back. Mm -hmm. This would be something else to save. And you're going with your get out of jail free flick roller. And that's a heck of an approach there. That's just outside the circle. Inside 42. Inside 42. So we might have a par save here from Yuli. Paul's T-Bird 3. Really good effort yeah, there inside great, the circle. Great up shot. Seppo also happened to go with the sidearm Anheuser approach. Yeah, it's really fun to see how, how diverse his game is mm -hmm. with the sidearm backhand. Like I said, tutter. Tutter putch. Tutter putch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really Matt and Powell Matt. running it from 112 feet. Great effort there. Oh, yeah. Just far enough inside the basket. Looked like it might have been left side, but oh, yeah. Just enough to hang in their corner pocket. I'm kind of I'm kind of like, what am I doing there? Yeah, that was. But inside, I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm sure you were. <laughs> Seppo just not getting it up there. Mm -hmm. Paul able to save his par. Showing the difficulty of this hole. Only birdied by 10% of the field, averaging 3.16. Third hardest hole in the course, according to the scoring average. It's, it's a tough hole to get. It's one you definitely feel like it's... Almost a bonus. Well, yeah, for it's sure. a bonus hole to get for without a question. I haven't even been, been able to beat those first three trees yet. And the first two rounds on coverage, we haven't seen anyone even right. putting really. Hole three, par four, 660 feet. T shot wants to keep a low tunnel shot here. Uh, most players are going to go with a stand up fairway driver, maybe a sidearm, um, perhaps even a roller to try to get past this corner here on the right side. Try to land your drive somewhere on this downslope hill on the grass, setting yourself up for a downhill approach about 200 feet or so to a sloping down right to left green. It's a shot that you can really let loose if you can keep the disc low. Yeah, this is a really, really well designed one. And this needs to fade a little bit. This is looking really nice actually from that. It's not going to crest down to the bottom of the hill, but that's still in a really good position. He's going to have nothing in the way for his approach. Yeah, you don't have to get very far off the tee here. 
to have a, a look in for birdie. You'll just have two trees to deal with. Like Paul's shot here, it looks a little turned over, but he just barely missed oh, that yep. right side, and that's going to be wide open. Up. And even on an open hole such as this one, placement, placement, placement is so imperative here. Of course, it's all about angles and setting yourself up for your second shot. Only four par threes in the course. So there's so many par fours where that tee shot is so important just to place it somewhere where you can throw your second. And that was a nice shot there from your with your X1. Mm -hmm. And Seppo a bit tight here. That needs to fade a lot. Otherwise, he's going to be in danger of not having a look to the green. But that skip there really helped him. And this is not the PA Wonder. It's a PA1, but not the actual. Or is it? Was it? Same one I was throwing the day before. Oh, was it? Okay. I'm sorry. And Matt with a nice help on the tree on the green. Good approach. Absolutely. This is a really skinny, skinny green. I mean, these players are not having a very far distance into the green. Mm -hmm. But it's still, Oof. you know, probably 40 feet wide is all. And, and, and a really touchy slope, like you said, to if you get it high at all, like what Paul's got here, he's left that up, up yep. a bit. And it's going to be tough yep. to stop. And, and there's also roots on most all of these greens. So when you go downhill and there's roots, you can't like slide it to the pin consistently with any confidence because you're going to hit roots and stop well short of where you'd like. So it's just, it just takes perfection with the speed to right to give yourself the looks that you want yeah paul missed his approach shot by maybe two feet of height mm -hmm. and he went you know he's well outside the circle yeah probably about 48 feet or so and count it nothing bushwhacking about that one no bushwhackers here folks a little more wobble than we're used to seeing from him doesn't matter in for birdie and Seppo has a real short one as well. Mm -hmm. Seppo showing off that touch makes him one of my favorite players to play catch with he just has a lot of frisbee knowledge yeah. and that makes it just fun to you do all sorts of fun things when you play catch such a great way to warm up hole four par four 675 foot another Anheuser tee shot here players can go big high Anheuser shot well actually can't be that high but you can go with a big Anheuser backhand with something overstable that flexes back down like we saw Greg Barsby throw yesterday, almost all the way in the mouth of the gap here. Or you can throw a roller, another play as a sidearm. But very important to land in a very specific spot there on that green on the um, on the fairway. Because that'll leave you for a short but very technical skinny approach to another down slope green. Matt is going with that Anheuser catching the high ceiling, dropping him shorter of what he'd like to be, but the angle might not be too bad from there. And that's the height you want to see. Look at this thing. This is looking beautiful. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking oh. that somebody of his caliber of distance, and I, Eagle also is playing in the tournament, mm -hmm. they could maybe get a look here. If they, if they threw a perfect shot. Yeah, you know. why not? I mean, I don't think you could get much closer than maybe 80 feet or so, but that's that's within Macbeth range. Oh, yeah. Wow, not much slide there from Seppo, catching some thick leaf action there. But, I mean, that shot looked beautiful, and look how short it is of Macbeth's drive. That just yeah. shows how great that drive was. And this is a force-over roller here. And this is looking really nice as well. Just don't go too far right. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you're aiming up. That's a really great shot. Yeah, oh, yeah. He picked a spectator, folks, and he hit the spectator right in the ankles. Incredible accuracy from 450 feet. And 
and doesn't quite get through and that shows you how technical that mm -hmm. shot is from where he was he had he had a pretty accessible route but if you're off a little Oof. bit that's only a 10 foot wide gap about oh, 15 foot. And there you see the roots we're talking about that shot was just beautiful but catching a couple of those thick roots and coming up a bit short and look at this gap here from Paul. Ooh, Barry. Ooh. Folks, Paul just looked at me and winked at me. He knows how good that was. I think he was trying to run that. Yeah. Yep. Wow. A jump putt on this hole. Huh. I didn't think that was a thing. And he didn't really, you know, it didn't look like he really unleashed on that. That's why I was, at, it was after he threw that shot that I, I started thinking, like, actually, I think he could probably get this one. Yeah. Seppo knew it right out of his hand. Great putt there. That was perfect, right on the stripe. Way perfect to make up touch. for that root kick that slowed him down. As these players move in for their birdies, Matt will be tapping in for his par. Hole five, 690 foot, super tight, very technical tee shot here as players are gonna wanna throw a flip up fairway driver. If they're crazy and they have a ton of control, maybe even throw a flip up driver of some sort. Try to stay somewhere in the fairway. If you saw that little white tile on the ground, I believe that's the 300 foot tile. Get somewhere near there and you might be in position to get up and down for an eagle look. The basket is about 65 to 70 feet past the short pin here up on the rocks. It's a hole that we saw Silver let get an eagle on yesterday during round one and managed to back it up in round two with another eagle. So we'll see if any of these players here can join him on the eagle party. Hopefully maybe the last day he could get one more for the silver lining. Oh gosh, Paul. Ugh, that's not good. No. No. <laughs> Neither was that tee shot from Paul. Leaked a little bit left, but he had so much distance, he'll have some sort of scramble to get back to the fairway. Ooh. I'm and Seppo gets skinny between those two big oaks there on the corner. Maybe set up a forehand Anheuser approach, but he's close enough to the fairway that he's not going to be punished for that tee shot. And catching one of those two oaks that Seppo split, kicking into the woods, you're in scramble mode now. Mm hmm. Yeah, the first day, Barsby had a, a few really great saves, and he said, we're serving mm. breakfast all day today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Scrambled eggs, probably. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I like it. It was a Barsby. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, actually, yeah. And Matt, not a perfect shot, but managed to miss all the trees and make it up the fairway quite a bit. And like you said yesterday, you, sometimes the – the only goal is just advance, advance, advance. That cap I hit was... That was good. Yeah. That was a really good I shot. I barely pat myself on the back on the commentary, but... Yeah, that was a good shot. And so we're having to go with that 4 in Anheuser. And this is wow. perfect. Really good. Yep. Again, the roots skip. Not as favorable as you'd like, but that doesn't really matter. He should be in position to get up and down for his birdie look. Turns that mm. over just a bit much. I think he was going for the pin there. Yeah, he seems to be playing quite aggressive so far. Two down through the first four might not be as much under the par as, as he'd like, so he might be on attack mode here. Wow. You could be two under and be playing perfect, though, on yeah. this course. So. No, not for Macbeth standards. He, he's greedy. He is Rightfully so. Yeah. And this D2 here looking really nice for the flip up. Just needs to miss all these late trees. Doesn't look like it kicked a rock and rolled or anything. So you should be up there putting for your birdie. Look at this. Wow. 
really well thrown from Paul. Seppo displaying that touch again mm. with the forehand. Yeah. Off to the right side of the fairway in two is perfect because it opens up that gap. There's a couple trees in the middle of the fairway that can kind of make things tricky. Seppo made things easy. Ooh, a rare inside the circle miss. Matt, so rarely do you see a player that far back off the tee mm -hmm. scramble up the fairway. Two amazing shots after that tee shot and able to get his birdie. Yeah, really good, really good birdie from him and Paul and Seppo. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and I wasn't able to convert on mine, fortunately. Hole 6, 625 foot par 4. Players are going to start off on the right side. Maybe something pushing that right side fairway. Sloping down the fairway just a little bit left. You don't want to skip too far left because there is a guardian here on your second shot of about four or five trees as you can see come into the picture right there. Maybe like seven or eight trees actually. The further right you can be, the op more open this approach becomes for the forehand or the backhand putter or Anheuser. Basket's about 60 feet to the right, maybe 45 feet to the right of where the short pin is here, right up there in the rocks. Yeah, I really like this design because it kind of it kind of forces you to want to play hyzer, and if you do, mm -hmm. then you'll skip left and not have an accessible route. A lot of a lot of holes like this, I really oh, like yeah. because if you throw it just straight, mm -hmm. you'll have a better play. But it begs you to Oof. kind of get around that corner, you know. Correct. And Paul goes with a flip up of some sort, landing in that perfect grass patch that you want to see. And this is looking just as good, if not better. Yeah, that's really good. Oh, but that skip there, it's going to be pretty, he should be fine. He's close enough to that bunker that he should be able to manage that. This looks a little high, catches that leaf. He needs some oh. help. But he's in the middle, so he'll have, mm -hmm. he'll probably have something. But that was pushing the right side like you'd like to see. And hanging out there as wide as you possibly can without going through the woods. Like you've done here. This is looking really good. Yeah, three really great drives. And, and you know, a fairly accessible drive there from Matt as well. Yeah, we're, look, we're not looking for anything really better than what we did there. Yeah, and Matt's Anheuser shot does not. Wow. Doesn't catch edge, but still gets a huge forward skip. That's going to leave him a long birdie look. Mm -hmm. Paul going with his Firebird approach here. Perfect. Just playing simple disc golf. Nothing more, nothing less. Tight here, but yeah, inside the circle. Leaner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Seppo's not in any danger at all at this corner here. Leaving that a bit wide, but nice little kick right though. Mm -hmm. I think the tree was a bit in his way that mm -hmm. kind of pushed him to the right side there. On that putt, you expect him to hit chains or, mm -hmm. or basket or something there. And Seppo, four down through six holes. Off to a great start here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. yeah you know could have been better could have been better nice tree though yeah great tree could that have all been related to maybe the miss in the last hole I'm thinking about yeah absolutely I definitely wasn't feeling that confident but I hit a good enough putt I think it could have stayed it just kind of popped out mm -hmm. um but yeah, you oh. got to go through your routine and be confident, and I was not. There you go. 
07 par 3, 370 foot par 3. One of my favorite holes in the course, although I haven't done well on it at all. It is a fun hole to throw nonetheless. Downhill shot like this, you can throw really anything in your bag. Just something that goes straight, perfectly straight is a great shot. If you can get something to turn over here late or throw a sidearm that hyzers through these trees, even better. But it's the fun, anytime you're going downhill through a tight gap, it's just a fun shot. Absolutely. And is that a Firebird from Rebeth going the flex shot? Yeah, I like the sidearm myself. I feel like it's a higher percentage for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you did there. Mr. Percentage just got it. Seppo, look at this line here. Showing his percentage. Oh, pretty yeah. Good. Really nice shot there. That was an A2. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Very that must be. Yeah, it must be a pretty beat-in A2, as I remember those things are pretty Ooh, overstable. This is danger. I don't know what Matt was going with. It did not look like he was lining up the center fairway. Is there a backdoor straight route that he's trying to go for? Maybe. Interesting. And the D2 is on its way down towards the basket. Once again, oh, look, another tree kick inside the circle. Fantastic shot from Mulabari. Raising those percentages only if you can make his putt. One sidearm at a time. Yeah, only if you can make your putt, buddy. Don't get ahead of yourself here. And he gets out. He's gonna have a look there. That's a, you know, that's a makeable putt. Yeah. Oh, Paul with a mistake here, kicking off left. That's gonna leave him sixty feet or so for his, oh, sixty feet. And there's a par. That's that's how you do it, I guess. <laughs> On the stripe. Almost didn't even watch it the whole time. He's just annoyed yeah, he's that he had to do that. Ugh, par. Ugh. <laughs> Matt from 45 feet. Yep. Give it to me. Look at that release. He's releasing it at, like, his belly button. Yep. You don't see many players do that. It's, a, it's fun to watch him putt. He has a truly unique style. Yeah. And the putting clinic is on, folks. Seppo in for his birdie. Yulabari to raise his percentages. This is an important putt. Especially after absolutely whiffing the last two. <laughs> yep. Count it. Securely in the farthest left possible part of the <laughs> I basket. that one too. <laughs> that one went in though. <laughs> and there is a beautiful two pars and two birdies on hole seven. Moving on to hole eight. Par five. Just oozing with confidence. <laughs> 670 foot shot very specific landing zone that is just the name of the game here at iron hill you want to land your drive somewhere up on this uphill slope here where these rocks are there's rocks everywhere but back on that upslope is kind of where you'd like to be setting yourself up for another technical anhyzer or forehand shot just trying to keep it in the fairway as much as you can third shot gonna head up here on this pyramid not a triangle not a square block a pyramid, and that's where the basket will be. Seppo going to his flippy F5. Oh, if this turns, well, it doesn't matter if it turns or not. That's a huge tee yeah. shot. I mean, the spectators thought they were perfectly fine standing there. They became in danger as soon as that shot came out of his hand. When are you going to retire this disc? Never. How many times have you lost this disc? So many. <laughs> the story is Paul's lost this disc no less than eight times, and it has been found at least that many times, because that's you still have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One time I had to wait six months. Somebody found it, called me. I'm like, how is this even possible? <laughs> and look at these shots. I'm surprised no one's going with a forehand here, but Macbeth getting Macbeth love there, kicking right back to the fairway. That's the sweet spot there. Yeah, this is looking really nice as well. Oh, look at that. Ooh, nice Matt kick. Bell yeah. with the Macbeth love. <laughs> so smooth. Yeah. Just he's good at perfection, stuff. man. He just really yeah. is a good, he's good at stuff. It could be like the Paul Macbeth branding. Paul he's Macbeth. just good at stuff. He's just good at stuff. Matt Bell. Flexing the sidearm. Yeah, Matt. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. That was an incredible shot yeah. from, Matt, from Matt Bell showing mm-hmm. lots of control with the sidearm. Showing why Macbeth is so good. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice little scramble shot here. We're not seeing any trees on second shots. This is not normal. Yeah. What's going on here? Somebody better start hitting trees sooner. I'm going to call the disc golf police. Was that a... Okay, that was a forced Anheuser. It mm-hmm. looked like he might have been trying to throw a crazy stand-up roller. I think that's just a really overstable mm-hmm. disc. And this is a really nice flick approach right up there to the pyramid. Great approach there from Paul Ulibarri. Look at this little cheeky flick flex. Wow. Nice shot there from Seppo. That was very interesting looking form there. Yep. Just putting a lot of spin on it with that short wristed relief. Mm -hmm. Release, sorry. Relief. Release, relief. And here's a long eagle look. Yeah, that that was a rare mistake. A mistake. Did Macbeth? Did we miss an approach? Yeah, we missed an approach. Okay, hit, so that was a, a yeah. He hit a short tree in front of him, and then okay, you know, missed the. Well, able to make the par save there. Definitely gonna feel like he lost a stroke there because those first two shots were perfect. And Matt Bell in for his birdie. This is a very high basket. Like it, you're not comfortable unless you're, you know, kind of right under it. Or if you're a crazy person and you might be comfortable with it. Look at us matching, me and Seth. You guys are looking really good, looking like teammates. Sharp. Even the black hat and everything, man. Seppo keeping that hot round going. He's playing very well. Hold Steady. N- hole nine, par four, 555 feet to the very narrow gap here off the tee. After about 270 to 280 feet, the shot breaks off to the right. Sidearm flip up or a backhand Anheuser of sorts. We've seen some players get pretty aggressive. If you can throw a shot, commit to it, and have it turn the whole way and miss this big tree here in the middle, you can get up there for a long look. of a release for Seppo, but it's that was a solid kick. Fairway hit. Mark it in the stats. Fairway. And just guess. Oh, you're going with the D2 here? Going for the full shot. Oh, that is uh, a really bye. bad uh, kick. Bye. Yeah. And if that I deserved had, that. Yeah, you did. You did. You got aggressive. Mm-hmm. This is a definite risk reward. As you said yesterday, Almost all these players could hit that gap if they wanted to just keep it in the middle, but you guys are trying to break off a little bit more. I don't know why you'd do that, but, you know, to each his own. I wasn't thinking correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul will be going for, looks like a rock. Just trying to play the smart through the middle shot there, looking very nice. It's so smooth. Because that just kept Ugh. going, and he actually pushed past the fairway a bit. Mm-hmm. But out of his hand, I was thinking, like, okay, yeah, that, that's going to get to the perfect spot. And it just kept going and kept yeah. going. Oh, my favorite shot. It's a roll. <laughs> it's a flick roller. I'm going to start calling flick rollers the Ulibar because that's all I've seen you throw lately. I know. And it does keep going. That's just slowly rolling its way up there for a simple up and down for your par. So that was short of the corner, having to break one. Look at this, oh, this commitment. Oh, and does catch that tree right there in the middle. Yeah, there is a middle tree. If he misses that, he's golden all the way to the pin, pretty much, or at least to the circle. Mm-hmm. Flex. <sighs> Whacker Dilodowski. And look at that. Yeah, it looked like a great shot from Paul, but he has to go standstill. Back turn to the basket, flip up through a gap. 
perfectly done. Yeah, forget about it. It's easy, folks. He is outside the circle, so he's going to have to earn it, but we've seen him make longer ones than that. I don't think he could have thrown it much better, though. I mean, nope. you, you really can't park the shot from where he was. The best case scenario was about right within the five-foot radius of where he landed. That bell has a lot of touch inside mm -hmm. 200 feet. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very jealous of his backhand. Seppo's been going to this shot a lot. Yeah. And Showing why. Yeah. Leaving himself inside the circle, maybe about nine meters or so. 27, 28 oh, feet. Paul from a knee throwing a sidearm. <laughs> and very well done with your uh, tutter putch. My tutter putch is pretty good from that distance. Here's Paul, 37 feet. Yeah. Nope. I thought that was him. Yeah, everybody. In the <laughs> world thought that was in. Is Macbeth going to finish the front nine? Only four down. Nice. Aww, Seppo. Only four down. Six down, making a run. <laughs> tied with the lead here with Macbeth. Labari. And three under. I want to be four under. <laughs> Matt, he is 400, so it can be done. I mean, you just got to do it. Oh, that was an aggressive tap out there for Paul, but still maintains the lead after the front nine here. 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Only one bogey on the card, but man, Seppo backed it up with a lot of green, showcasing a, a lot of finished talent here. Ricky Wysocki. Hot start in the front nine. Zach Melton, Matt Bell, Paul Uliberry, Jeremy Colling, Silverlet, Andrew Fish, and Eagle McMahon all there in the chase. Be sure to join us from the back nine, the second round, 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge, presented by Innova Discs.